Welcome once again, dear friends, to our daily devotional. This is Reverend Phil Anderson, pastor of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue, United Methodist Church, right here in Topeka, Kansas. I'm delighted to have you join me this morning. It's Saturday, May 30th, 2020. This is Pentecost Sunday weekend. What a great weekend. I want to make sure that you join us tomorrow online at kaumc.church for our Pentecost Sunday service. Looking forward to that. And really looking forward just to spending these next few minutes with you. We keep these to about 10 minutes or so, maybe a little less. I try not to go over 10 minutes. I think I did last Monday. I told you, so. well, that ain't going to happen again. So, so far, I've maintained my promise to you that I'd keep the rest of this week under 10 minutes. So far, so good. But today, I just want to thank you again for joining us. You know, when I first started as the pastor of the Oakland and Kansas Avenue United Methodist Churches, we kind of got together for coffee over at the McDonald's there. I think it's 2000 Northwest Topeka Boulevard and had such a good time. And people just came in formally. We did it twice. And there's a kind of a different group both times. I think maybe a couple of people came to both of them, but it was just an informal time. And, you know, I miss those days. I, if we were able, I'm sure we'd probably have done that again by now. I, I kind of like doing that on a fairly regular basis but right now this online version has to do so i've got my coffee here i hope you can get a cup of coffee here and you can listen to these devotionals anytime by the way you don't have to listen to them in the morning but that's kind of when they're designed for and i usually try to record them in the morning sometimes i've recorded them in the afternoon and you know, as i've said before i usually record them a week or so ahead of time so if you hear things on here you go well, why didn't he talk about this this is going on in the world it's a big concern well I didn't hear about it if that was the case. I'm just recording these about a week or so ahead of time. And so that's a good thing. It's a good thing. I, I just think sometimes we need to pull away from some of the things that are so ever present with us. And we just need to take a step back and be quiet before the Lord. Let him speak to us. Let him guide us. And we really do that best, I think, when we just listen. You know, we... We're geared to talking and giving our opinions now on Facebook. We feel like if we don't get stand up to the microphone, then somehow this message that we believe we need to share with others isn't going to get out there. You know, God will take care of that. Just don't get yourself all in a tizzy and all upset about stuff on Facebook or social media. It's just not worth it. In fact, I hardly ever even really look on there simply because so much of it is just people's... Um, I won't say trying to start arguments but man it sure seems like it sometimes doesn't it things that are very highly um abrasive maybe and maybe they're designed to get a reaction so I, I i choose just not to react and move on but i really don't have time to get into that and if i ever use facebook and we do for the churches it'll always god willing it'll always be to present a, a good message positive message always try to keep christ in focus once we take our eyes off of christ i'll tell you everything just sort of goes down the tubes it seems like so just keep our focus on christ that's kind of what we're doing here today and we will read today from our new testament lesson which will be from the gospel of matthew and it will be the first 12 verses of chapter 5 so this is where the Sermon on the Mount begins. Let's read in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. One day as he saw the crowds gathering, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. God blesses those who are poor and realize their need for him, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses those who mourn, for they will be comforted. God blesses those who are humble, for they will inherit the whole earth. God blesses those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they will be satisfied. God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. God blesses those whose hearts are pure, for they will see God. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God blesses those who are persecuted for doing right, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. God blesses you when people mock you and persecute you and lie about you and say all kinds of evil things against you because you are my followers. Be happy about it. Be very glad. For great reward awaits you in heaven. And remember, the ancient prophets were persecuted 
in the same way. Well, that's we call those the Beatitudes, right? Those are things that Jesus was instilling in his followers, his disciples. And it was at the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus spoke these words. It's the freedom, I believe, that strikes me out of all of that today, just as I'm sitting here and just pondering these along with you. The freedom that we don't have to compete with the world. The, the freedom that we don't have to get the last word in on a Facebook message. The freedom of just loving others, no matter how they treat us. The freedom of having our defenses down so we don't have to be on guard all the time against those who would not understand the love of God and who would say all kinds of hurtful things or do all kinds of hurtful things. Now, I'm not saying we have to be pushovers. Don't get me wrong. There's a time we need to stand up. I'm not saying we have to just sit there and take it. What I am saying is, as much as is possible, let things just roll off your back like water off the back of a duck. Don't let it face you. What I think... I'm hearing today from the Lord is don't be a lightning rod that attracts every bit of static that the world would throw our way. Don't react to other people in a defensive way. Oh, that's hard. But instead, condition and train yourself to respond to them in a loving way, forgiving way, a merciful way. I remember reading a book a few years ago and this author is a really good book. I wish I could tell you the name of it. I'm, I'm skipping. I can see the cover in my mind. So if I think of it and find it, I'll, I'll share some passages with you. I think it's maybe up at the church. I'm recording this from my home right now today, but one of the things that the author said in this book was that you never know what somebody else is going through. You don't know what someone else is going through. And so someone, someone may be difficult to deal with. Someone may treat you bad. And that's where we got to just step back and understand that maybe that person's crying out for help. Or maybe they just had something go on in their life that we don't understand, we don't know about. You know, I'm going to conclude this today with this thought. Have you ever been shown mercy by someone? Think for a minute, have you ever been given grace by someone when you did something that probably deserved a good comeback or that you deserved a good rebuke for the way you acted or treated someone? You mistreated somebody. I, I think we've all done that. I've done it plenty of times. And instead of getting back and lashing back out, someone was kind to me in return. You know, it just took, it just took all that anger out of me at some point just brought it down that's how i believe god wants us to deal with other people love them treat them the way we want to be treated and show them the grace and the mercy that jesus christ has shown to us we do that i believe god's going to bless us he'll walk with us he'll give us the strength to do just that it's not always easy but he'll give us the strength to do it amen hey let's close in a word of prayer today father again i thank you for getting us through the week into this Saturday. Now, Lord, I pray your blessing upon each one listening. Bring us back together tomorrow, Lord, as we worship you on Pentecost Sunday. We ask this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I do invite you to join us again tomorrow, Sunday, May 31st, 2020. That's tomorrow for our Pentecost Sunday service at kaumc.church. Until then, may God richly bless you is my prayer. Have a great day.